Okay. So we are doing section three, four, solving two-step and multi-step. Um, I know it says equations up here, but this is actually inequalities. Okay. So you treat them just like an equation. And when I solve, I like to draw that line. And then you focus on where is the variable and how do you get it by itself. So I know that the variable is being multiplied by four and then 160 is being added. You have to undo it in the reverse order. So I am going to subtract 160. Bring down, you have a four, an F. Make sure you bring down your inequality symbol. And then 500 minus 160 is going to give me that 340. And then my next step is to divide by four. And I know that it zooms in and out and it focuses and there's not much I can do about that right now. Divide by four, F is less than or equal to, and then I'm just gonna do this off to the side here. Four goes into 34 eight times. And it goes into 25 times, so I get 85. And that's your answer. You guys do not need to graph these on our notes today, okay? Okay, the next one, same thing. You have to get the variable by itself. The T is being, um, it looks like it's being subtracted, but it's really not. I would need to subtract seven from both sides to get rid of that seven. Minus two T comes down, less than or equal to 21 minus seven gives us 14. Now here, I'm gonna divide by a negative two. What happens when I divide by a negative? I have to flip the inequality symbol. And if you don't do that, your answer will not come out correctly. I know I had a few people ask me questions on, um, they were doing the solving with multiplication and division on IXL and they kept on having trouble. So that is why you have to flip if you divide by a negative. Okay. Our next problem. Again, doesn't matter which side the variable's on. I need to move the six away from both sides first. So negative 12 minus six gives me a negative 18. You guys get to use a calculator now. So don't let um, a simple mistake happen by not just calculating it. If you aren't good at remembering your positives and negatives, just use a calculator. Okay, I'm gonna divide by three. I'm dividing by a positive three. So even though there's a negative in my problem, I don't need to flip my sign. Negative divided by a positive is a negative. 18 divided by three is six. Like I said, I don't need to flip because the number I moved was not negative. Okay, letter D. So on letter D, the x plus five is stuck up at the top and the negative two is on the bottom. The first step is moving that negative two because you cannot move the five until it's alone. So I'm gonna multiply, it's being divided, so I'm gonna multiply both sides by a negative two. Now I'm multiplied by a negative two, so I have to flip my sign right away. And then three times a negative two is a negative six. And then my next step is to subtract by that five.
negative six minus five is negative 11. Letter E is very similar. It's being divided by three. So you need to multiply by three on both sides. I multiplied by a positive three, so I don't flip any symbols. Tw seven times three is 21. The one, it's a positive one. So I need to subtract one in order to cancel it. The minus two, it goes with the two n, it does not go with the one. That does have to um, come down with that next part of the problem. 21 minus one is 20. Then my last step is to divide by a negative two. That dividing by the negative two causes me to have to flip my inequality symbol. 20 divided by a negative two is a negative 10. So any questions on the first section of those solving two-step inequalities? Go ahead. The next type of questions, they want you to simplify before solving the inequalities. So again, I really like to draw my line and ask yourself on each side of the equation, is there anything I can do on this side before I start moving things around? So a negative four plus a negative eight, is there anything I can do? Yeah, I can add them together. I get a negative 12. Is there anything you can do on the other side of the inequality? And the answer is no. So then I just rewrite it and then I solve it. So I'm gonna get the C by itself. So I have to add the two first and I get a negative 10 is less than negative five C divide by a negative five. Okay, I need to flip my symbol Negative divided by negative is a positive two. Flip my inequality symbol and I get C. I like to keep the, if the variable starts on the left, I keep it on the left. If it starts on the right, I keep it on the right. That's one thing that helps me make sure I don't um, have my symbol or my inequality in the wrong spot. Okay, the next problem. Is there something that you can do first? Sure. We can distribute this three into both of these. So negative three times a positive three is a negative nine. Negative three times a negative X is a positive three X. And then on the other side, can you take four and square it? Sure, and I get a 16. Now I'm gonna solve. I'm going to add 9 to both sides. 3x is less than 27. And then I divide both sides by a 3. I didn't have to flip my sign. I did not multiply or divide by a negative. So there's your answer. Okay, now the next one, we did some of these with fractions before. Notice none of your fractions have a like denominator, but if you get them to have a like denominator, you can eliminate the denominator, which is extremely helpful. So 5 and 2 both can be multiplied to have a denominator of 10. And so what you do is you multiply the fifths by a 2 over 2, the halves by a 5 over 5, and I know this is kind of small, but two times four is eight. So eight tenths X plus 
five tenths is greater than six tenths. Oh, Miss Goldberg, you put 16 plus nine is 27. Yeah, that's what oh, I was Oh, sorry, 25. I thought, okay, I thought I was missing a rule there or something else. Like, <laughs> no, good catch, you guys. I don't know why I was thinking um, something divisible by three. I think that's why I was trying to think. Okay, let's fix that. 3x is less than, and 9 and 6, that would give us a 25. Divide both sides by 3x, and we're going to have a fraction here, and that's okay. 3 goes into 25 nicely 8 times, and that's 24, and there's one left over. Is that better? Good yeah. catch, you guys. I'll give everyone a chance to catch up here. Okay, so now we're going to come back to letter H. When they all have like denominators, you can forget about the denominator and you rewrite this problem with just the numerator. So we have eight X plus five is greater than six. So it took a problem that we had fractions and now you get rid of those fractions and you can just work with whole numbers. It's very likely that we will have a fraction for our answer, but at least you don't have to work with them to get your answer. So now I'm going to subtract five from both sides. Then you have 8x is greater than 1. And then you divide both sides by 8. x is greater than 1 eighth. And that's your answer. Any questions on those ones before I go to the next page? Just a couple more. On this particular problem, again, what can you simplify before solving? The 2m plus 5, there's nothing you can do, but the 5 squared can be written as 25. Okay, and then we will go about solving it. The first thing I would do was subtract the 5 from both sides. 2m is greater than 20. Divide both sides by a 2. m is greater than 10. On letter J, again, what can you simplify before you solve? Don't make the mistake. You cannot add 3 plus 2. 2 is being multiplied. So you have to multiply both things in the parentheses by the 2 first. So then this turns into 3 plus 2x plus 8 is greater than 3. Now on that left-hand side, I can take three plus eight first. Three plus eight is 11. And then I would subtract 11 from both sides. Three minus 11 is gonna give us a negative eight.
And then we can divide both sides by a two. I don't have to worry about flipping the sign because I'm moving a positive number. Even though I get a negative number, it's only when you multiply or divide by that negative. Okay, the last two problems are a couple of word problems. So it says to win the ribbon for the heaviest pumpkin crop at the county fair, the average weight of John's two pumpkins must be greater than 818 pounds. One of his pumpkins weighs 887 pounds. What is the least number of pounds the second pumpkin could weigh in order for John to win the blue ribbon? <clears throat> So we can um, set up an equation for this and then solve. So basically they're saying that the average of his pumpkins must be greater than 818 pounds. Okay, so remember how I said that I like to write it out in words a lot of times first? Well, to find the average, you would take pumpkin one and you would take pumpkin two and you'd add them together. You divide them by two and that total, that average has to be greater than 819. So there we kind of, it leads us to our equation. Well, we know that his first pumpkin or one of them weighs 887 pounds. So eight, eight, seven plus, and I'm just gonna put P here plus the other pumpkin divided by two has to be greater than 819. Now at this point, you can forget that it's a word problem. How would I solve this equation? You have to get the variable by itself. So the first thing that we would do is multiply by the two. And I'd get eight, eight, seven plus P has to be greater than and if I doubled 820, I'd get 1640. So this should be 1638. And then my last step is just subtracting that 887. And I would get P has to be greater than, if I subtract, I get a one, not a borrow. 13, it's a five, and then 15 minus eight, 751 pounds. Has to be greater than 751. Any questions on how I did that? Just gonna double check, make sure I don't make any mistakes. We're good. Okay. Same type of situation here. Um, and I've actually had to do this. I remember taking a chemistry class and they averaged your three, they call them like midterms or whatever. And so I was trying to figure out what I had to get on my last one to get a certain grade in the test or in the class. So it's kind of stressful. So it says the average of his two test scores must be at least a 90 to make an A in the class. So again, the average has to be at least a 90. Can it be equal to a 90? And the answer is yes. So I can put that greater than or equal to a 90 to get an A. How do you find the average? Well, he's got two test scores. So T1 plus T2 divided by two has to be greater than or equal to a 90. And then again, we can insert the 95 that he got on that first test. And then we can solve. So I'd multiply both sides by a two. 95 plus T has to be greater than or equal to 180. Tracked by 95 on both sides. T is greater than or equal to 85.
And that's how you would solve that last one.